All right, let's just jump right into this one. So, so we had played a blue-white humans deck a little while back. And we had talked about when we played that, even though that list felt reasonable, that it might be decent to splash in red cards into the deck for uh, five-color human staple Mantis Rider, which is just a very reasonable Magic Gathering card, as well as some removal slash reach in the form of Lightning Bolt. So the big question you want to ask yourself is, what's the upside to playing a three-color human deck as opposed to traditional five-color human deck that's been very successful? The big thing you gain is that your mana base is uh, normal lands instead of things like Ancient Ziggurats and Cavern Souls and Unclaimed Territory, which gives us access to playing things not only like Lightning Bolt, but also allows us to cast n powerful non-human creatures easier like Giver of Runes here. Um, out of the sideboard, we also get to leverage things like Spell Queller, Deputy of Detention, even Tefri Time Raveler, which are cards that five color humans normally can't cast. So um, this 75 actually had five owed uh, a league, so very similar idea to our blue white, the blue white best we played a while back with uh, with the extra color in it. So let's go ahead and uh, dive on in here and see how this feels. Hey, happy weekend, Jeremy. How are you doing, folks? Evening from Korea. Yeah, I'd uh, like to do some weekend streams here and there. And there's when there's no major event on, the numbers can often be good. So it's hard to hard to tell for sure. Morning, Reg. There's a, there's a Grand Prix this weekend, but of course there's no video coverage at it, because why would we put video coverage at our Grand Prix? Hey, what's going on, Branch? Yeah, I'm planning to do... I've got a bunch of standard decks in the title. I'm planning to do at least this and one standard deck. And then, depending on how the numbers look at the end of the standard deck... We'll see if we want to do more than that. Yeah, this hand looks pretty good. Yeah, we're going to start with Yarok Field 2, and I think we're going to have a longer session with it. Because I'm playing it in the tournament next weekend. So we're going to try some things out. We're going to try some Crackling Counterparts today. Someone had said, or quasi duplicate, quasi duplicate, not crackling counterpart. Quasi duplicate is a card someone said they've been having good success with. One of the things that I feel like is a little bit awkward in this list is they're playing Unsettled Mariner with um, alongside Phantasmal Image, which this card isn't really a combo with Phantasmal Image because, like, your opponent targets Phantasmal Image and they don't have to pay one mana and the image just dies. So that's a card. Phantasmal Image was a card that our straight blue white list was not playing. That being said, um, Phantasmal Image is very good with things like Mantis Rider, so. Faithless Looting, Ditch Axe, Ditch Swamp, kind of bodes well for us. They could be the Gak. Some of the some of the Gak decks do have Lightning Axe in their main deck, but regardless of their Gak or Dredge, they didn't have any Graveyard Synergy stuff to ditch to start. Mm, that's an okay read. They could be Grishel Brand. The Verdant Catacombs makes it less likely to be Grishel Brand. It looks like looks like it's just the Gak with the medium start. You know, it's very possible. That I should have named... I think I messed up my land sequencing here. I think I should have played the Sunbit Canyon to cast this Meddling Mage. Because... Um, what's the word I'm searching for? I don't have a blue source to cast the Phantasmal Image currently. It's actually a little awkward. There's only two Cavern of Souls in this 75. And we've just drawn both of them.
I actually just did my lawn. I woke up, woke up and hacked it down. The weather's been so hot here with so little rain that it hasn't grown that much. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I had to do it. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a little bit quiet during this first game and maybe match while I finish my my oatmeal though. Lots more things that can't block here. Opponents down to two cards in hand. <clears throat> with this, uh, with this Mantis Rider. Huh. So what's the, what's the total damage output here? So if I go Champion of the Parish into Mariner, I'm hitting for plus one. But then the following turn, I get to hit with both of these. I think it's right to do this as opposed to the Mantis Rider now. Hey, Alpa, thank you for the five months of Twitch Prime support. I appreciate that. Welcome welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Yeah, they have, they have a really slow Hogok start. For sure. I mean, Hogok, the Hogok deck is obviously very good. But just like every deck in Magic, it has a failure rate, right? Magic, Magic is a high variance game, as we like to say. Oh, honey. Oh, mmm. Mmm, they did it. They activated our trap card, chat. They activated our trap card. Just, just chef's kiss. So, Unsettled Mariner here. It says whenever a permanent you control becomes a target of an opposing spell or ability, that, can get, that ability gets countered unless they pay one. So they obviously should have trophied in response to uh, in response to the Mariner here. And then they're actually dead to Mantis Rider and Keswick Malcontents here. Actually, they're just dead on board, right? Just, just in case they have something silly showing them. They can assume we have Mantis Rider, I think. My opponent conceded the match. All right, you know, sometimes so, sometimes you've just had enough. Hey, Hoppix. Why are you almost always playing Bruise in Modern instead of Tier 1 decks? I think Modern Leagues are not the place for those. Well, Modern's not really the place for those. Um, a lot of the decks we play on this stream are viewer, viewer submitted deck lists, just like... Just like the standard portion, although standard standards been a lot more, a little bit more friendly that that style of play. But to answer to answer your question, I'm going to reject people's money more aggressively moving forward because you're right. <clears throat> the last the last two days before this are have been decks that have been like aggressively mediocre. I mean, in my defense, one of the decks we played yesterday had literally top eight at a Grand Prix and was still a pile of crap. So like, I don't know, I don't know that you can really judge me too much for taking that one. All right, you can and you should, but that's still modern. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I'm ditching the Mariner. We're going to go like champion into lieutenant into image lieutenant. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the neat stuff is bad. Is the long and short of it. And the other, the other thing is that, like, in order to try neat stuff, you have to accept things that are like, 
look, they might be mediocre. If you, like, only accept tier one things, like, you don't get any neat stuff in there. And, like, while there's a failure rate with neat stuff, like, sometimes you do find ones that are good. And I think the more important flip side, too, is that, like, take, for instance, the last time we played, the last time we played, um, the last time I played Hagak on this stream, we went, um, the last time I played Hagak on this stream, I went, uh, one and three with it, I think it is, or oh and three or something. It was not a good run. Like, playing, playing tier 1 decks does not guarantee you the ability to, to have a good finish with them. Alright, looks like we're playing against Fish here. Which, Phantasm is probably pretty bad in this matchup. Because they have things like Merfolk Trickster that just, like, diddle it and kill it. Yeah, the Hagak opponent conceded the match after the first game. You didn't play the good version of Hagak yet. Played played a version that seven two or seven three or whatever he two the Pro Tour. Yep. So we're gonna bolt this guy. And then Phantasmal Image, this guy. That's a Mantis Rider. Huh. Yeah, I think, I think I'd rather... I think I'd rather get another Thalia's Zone at this turn than play the Mantis Rider, mostly because I want a Lightning Bolt. Hey, what's going on, Lenny? Welcome back. I got to beat Tron with Jund last night. Also, I like the weekend streams. Uh, weekend streams will never be a consistent thing for my schedule, but I'll do them when they when time allows. It's mostly like a, a resource allotment thing too. Like a lot of the time, especially if there's a big event going on on the weekend, because I don't stream regularly on the weekend, uh, I don't have a very large audience on weekend days. We're gonna uh, diddle my champion of the parish here. Them, them tapping that, as opposed to killing this Thalia's Lieutenant, might end up being good for us here. Now the question is, do I want to hit them for three, or do I want to hold this back on defense? I feel like I probably want to hit them for three, right? Like, I've got this Mantis Rider and this Malcontents. I feel like I'm in an okay position to race here. Like, what's their, what's their best possibles next? Their best possibles is, like, land... Double Lord Fire Mutavolt attack. I probably lose that race. Because that would be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, if they have a Lord, I can't block anyways. But I also think there's a chance that, like, if they, if they have a Lord that they would have put in two Lords last turn. But maybe not. Yeah, they could be on Mariner. They could be on Path to Exile. They could also just be, like, playing around Choke. Merfolk decks have, like, randomly played, like, these are basically just, like, islands that come into play untapped on 1, 2, 3. So, like, play around Choke. It's tech, it's tech for the Merfolk Mirror Match, so you don't have islands that they can island walk you. Red Rover, Red Rover, let the Merfolk come over. So assuming they have nothing, this is lethal next turn, right? It's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. They could have, they could have another diddler though. They could have. So this is a hit for 8, puts me to 7. Yep. Glad, glad I didn't hold this back because we weren't blocking anyways. Mariner, sure. 
So do they have to block two of my things here is the question. I don't think they do. So if I play, if I play this out, if I play this out, I'm hitting them for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so we're we're dead, right? We've just been successfully outraced. They had they had an aether vial which allowed them to deploy all their threats faster than we could, is what this game ended up coming down to. Is they'll they'll chump block here and then I'm getting hit for eight with island walk nine if they activate this. Hey, what's going on, James? When's your next time streaming Yar Ock Field? Uh, after this deck. We're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing. Uh, uh, Malcontent only does damage to a player or a planeswalker. We're gonna be doing Yarak Field every every stream this week. So I'm playing it in an MCQ next weekend. So Talia is not particularly good here. Deputy and Staticaster are good. I think I want to trim a couple of Phantasmal Image just because of Merfolk Trickster. That seems fine. Maybe it's right to trim, like, a Malcontents. Just because, uh, I'm bringing in 3-3, three, three, so I don't want to drag my curve up too much. I could see that. Actually, Meddling Mage doesn't seem particularly good in this matchup, huh? This was, this was a card I ended up not playing in my... Maybe we did play. I don't remember what we played in the in the blue white humans. It's been a hot second. The sideboard feels pretty light for other creature matchups, though. A hey, block chat. Thank you for the quarter of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Hey, Stagall, thanks for the Prime support. Glad you enjoy the YouTube stuff. Welcome back. Um, this hand's just not going to cut it, right? Is it? Is it? It's got land. Like, are we here to mulligan land Aether Vial? These Phantasmal Images are kind of mediocre, though. I don't have a way to cast this Lightning Bolt. I think I'm supposed to play Catch and Release here. These Cavern of Souls are just glue door openers. Peak, peak magic is mulligan, close seven, get unkeepable six. Always, always punished in high variance game for being conservative. Feels like. All right, yep. Bottom that, bottom that. This hand is uh, not particularly good, though. These deputy detentions notably are not human, so they are not going to power up our uh, champion parish. They are Dalkin wizards. Right, it's a good draw. So hopefully we find a third land here. Meddling Mage is good for spreading seas. That seems incredibly narrow. I'm I'm also gonna have an island in play a non-zero amount of the time. This is, uh, this is where the magic happens. Severed Oathbreaker. That's a commander variant, right? How does, how does Oathbreaker differ from normal commander? As someone who has, has no idea what either, I, has a vague idea of how normal commander works and does not, does not have the slightest idea of what Oathbreaker is. I'm sure they do, Ostin. If you look at look at their their website, all the all the details on how their system works should be ironed out there. You you buy it, you you pay money in to get their coins, and then their coins convert back out. But I'm sure there's a cut off the top, so they actually make money. You can have planeswalkers in the command zone and get a signature spell that works like a commander. This is peak peak internet is asking there oh there's no creature commanders at all. So 
So it's only it's only planeswalkers. Morning basic lands. Alright, the CN does stuff. Renin six plus crop rotate. Is strip mine legal? Is strip mine legal in this format? Because Renin, Renin 6 plus crop rotation sounds like peak misery in a format where strip mine is legal. Steam vents, snow covered forest, occur drive elder, probably bring the lightscape shift or teamer shift. Hey, what's going on, dumpster? Uh, there's just no, there's no uh, major events going on this weekend that are being broadcast, so decided to, uh, decided to pop on. Soul Ring is banned, but Strip Mine is legal in the format where you can always have Ren and Six plus crop rotation. Sometimes, sometimes I wonder when people design like that. That's got to change, right? That sounds that sounds wacky. I mean, every format of Magic is technically multiplayer, right? Our start here is like relatively aggressive. It's not like one drop on one aggressive, but it's like pretty aggro. Um, so I probably want to get this out of anger of the gods range, right? That's probably what I want to do. I could do, I could play both of these though as well. Like, I can cast this, and then in response to the trigger, put this other one into play. But then, like, I'm kind of hosed by Anger next turn. I think I want to play around Anger slash Sweltering Suns here. Hagak. Hagak is such a, uh... Hagak is such a popular deck that Anger is a pretty common main deck card in decks like the opponent's playing. It's like if Commander was more broken. Yeah, sounds like it. All right. So let's put this into play. Let's attack for three. I think cast down's fine, Marty. I might try some cast downs today. I think one of the harder matchups for that deck is Jun Dinos, and cast down's probably one of the best cards you can put in the sideboard for that matchup. Having having more ways to kill rotting registers seems pretty important. I'm also I'm also not certain that Golden Demise is a card I want in the sideboard, mostly because of mana base considerations. So in response to this thing's enter play trigger, I'm going to put this Mantis Rider into play. And the reason why we do this is because this allows Mantis Rider to get the bonus from this, but also this to get a plus counter from the Mantis Rider. Uh, with this bolt, we're pretty close to a lethal attack here. For, uh, yeah, we actually have lethal if they get hit by all of these. We could get Cryptic Commanded though. No Cryptic, all right. One of the United's opponent made him play out the Blasto Nexus Tamiyo field loop when they were at 400 life. He ended game one with three minutes on the clock. Sounds, sounds right. So I have this bolt that's lethal, but I really don't want to cast it while my opponent has cryptic command, cryptic command mana up. 
So I am going to go ahead and bolt them now because they don't have cryptic command mana up anymore. This is again one of those one of those upsides of playing um, the just guy as opposed to the five color because we get to just like have an actual reach in our deck. All right, so Spell Queller and Tough Free Time Raveler seem great here. Thalia, Guardian of Three Bin seems great. I know we just killed our opponent with a Lightning Bolt, but Lightning Bolt's actually a card I'm pretty sure we want to board out here just so they don't have many creatures that we're actually killing with it. Just like its only mode is going upstairs, which seems not quite good enough. I think I actually want to trim Phantasmal Image in this matchup because um, my opponent's deck's going to be more controlling, especially post-board, which means they're going to be killing our creatures off. And if we can't keep creatures in play, Phantasmal Image becomes a lot worse. Yeah, the balancing mechanics of playing multiplayer magic are are weird. I feel like to make multiplayer magic good, you need to play something like uh, like uh, the pentagon. We used to play a pentagon mode as a as a child, pentagram mode, whatever whatever you called it, where you had you had five players and the people on either side of you were your team your teammates, and you had to beat the two people across from you. So it like gave very defined ways of who you're supposed to be attacking and who you're supposed to be working with. Yeah, this hand seems pretty good. Oh, I, I don't want to bottom here. Is it too greedy to bottom a land? I'm on the draw. I'm gonna bottom a land. Five point, sure. It might have been right to even ship this. Because, like, casting casting this here is a bit of a liability. Because, like, if they have, like, a bolt or it is a charm, I get two for one tier. Yeah. Because now there's nothing for this to copy. I don't know. I don't know if I could just, like, not make a play that turn, though. Especially since I kept it. Narset, sure. So this will kill Narset. They got a scape shift off of that. They already knew that's what was going on. Huh. So do I GM Mantis Rider into a Cryptic Command tier where I like enter combat, attack? I think I'm just supposed to jam. I want to like get my more expensive spells cast so that I can start holding up Spell Queller. NRWGN. Thank you for the 13 months of support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Happy Saturday. Welcome to the weekend. Think I need to hold up spell queller just yet? I guess I could theoretically like end step ramp spell on tap scape shift beam. So maybe I'm supposed to. They are they are playing growth spirals. Like if they end step growth spiral here. I could die to scape shift next turn. Ice fanged coddle, yep. This thing will have uh death touch when they play another basic out. Or another one of these, right? These kind of snow permanents for each other. I don't think we can win from here. If 
Feels like we run out of steam here. Our, our deck we're playing is very, very linear. We kind of just like do our thing and like hope it's good enough. We have like a smidge of interaction between like bolts and meddling mages, but that's about it. I wonder if I'm supposed to leave bolt in my deck to deal with this card post board. Yeah, Phantasmal, Phantasmal image is like pretty bad in this matchup, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these and bring two bolts back in. That seems, that seems fine. I'm boarding in more Guardian of Three Bins, so like I have plenty of two drops still, 16 twos. And I have, I have Giver of Runes, which can help with the Ice Fang Cuddles as well. I think Static Caster's too narrow. Also, I also have Tefri Time Reveler, and like I know they have four of them, but like they're not gonna draw their four of every game. And Static Caster's just like such a bad card if they don't have Ice Fang, so. I think I would have bolts three and four long before I would play this in this matchup. I think boarding, boarding, static caster in is an overreaction. Bringing, bringing a couple of bolts back in is fine. Because, like, bolts can be time walk sometimes by just, like, finishing their dome. Or, like, finishing off a narf that is useful, too. Seems pretty good. I don't currently have a blue source for my spell queller, notably though. Is Deputy Genera? Why do I why do I want Deputy? For Ice Fang? Like boarding boarding in Deputy to kill their creature, to exile their creature that draws a card when it comes into play against the deck that's littered with removal spells is exceedingly bad. Generally generally speaking, you never want Deputy against decks that are really heavy removal. That being that being said, Cavern Cavern is going to be pretty good here in the fact that uh, it makes the remand not good here. So they can have exactly a second bolt, but if they don't have exactly a second bolt, they can't interact with my stuff because they can't counter me because of this, and this stops is a charm from being being a spell. I have another bolt. It's unfortunate. Just pure, sure. Survey says. Anger, anger and faltering sounds would be pretty bad for us next turn. Escape shift, yep. And then from here, if they don't take either of my creatures out of play, I'm probably just gonna like play a tap lane and just like start passing my spell queller up. So yeah, we have five power in play at their and they're at twelve, so if we get to untap with five power, there's just like no reason to not just like hold up protection. All right, that, however. I like down to seven here. So they give us, they give us something worth quelling next turn. They, they didn't anger me last turn. This is, this is a little aggressive, but they didn't anger me last turn. So I, I'm not going to play around it this turn. I think I just want to like put lethal in play. Hope they're dead. Mm, that's a good call. These two lands don't cast, uh. I technically should have tapped it away to leave blue mana up to bluff a counter spell here. Yeah, this is this is heads up on the opponent's part. If they didn't if they didn't cast cryptic in response here, I was gonna name cryptic command. Alright, so now what do I what do I name with this meddling mage though? Oh, we 
we haven't seen a fourth color, so bring to light doesn't make a lot of sense. They're pretty far off of Scape Ship. I think I just name Anger of the Gods and hope like that's their three mana sweeper of choice. I think that makes the most sense. They like land, field, me, cast Sweltering Suns. I'm incredibly sad, but. Not a whole lot I can do about that. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. It's prevalence of Hagak. Anger is likely. We might we might just get fogged three turns in a row here and then die to escape shift though. Well, if we draw Kessig Malcontents, we can kill them through a Cryptic Command next turn. Oh, am I dead? I think I'm dead. Yeah, we've died, right? Yay, Double Fog dead. So they're going to, for people not familiar with the opponent's deck, this gives them land number seven. And then Scape Shift with seven lands gets a Valakut and six mountains, which makes the Valakut deal 18 damage to me. So we have, we have died. This is, this is a great example, too, of, like, people asking, like, well, why don't you just play all good decks in Modern Jeff? It's like, well, even even good decks like this, like, this is a small variation on, like, an established Tier 1 deck, and, like, this variation had posted a couple of 5 O's in leagues. Like, playing a good deck in Magic is no guarantee that you're going to generate good games, especially with the state of the current Magic formats. I feel like, I feel like both Standard and Modern are kind of littered with, like, games that are non-games, and games that are just, like, pretty uninteresting and linear. I'm like, there's definitely good games to be had in between those, but the cards that are legal right now and the decks that are good tend to generate a little bit more of those than I feel like we normally have. We're, we're a far cry from the Splinter Twin Birthing Pod Jund modern formats of old. Oh crap, did Unsettled Mariner, does that counter Valakut? Holy crap, you're right, Marty. <laughs> That's great. That's hilarious. It targets, it counters, it stops discard spells too. This is whenever you are a permanent you control be sorry, a spell or ability. That's a great, that's a great catch. So the Valica, they would have had to pay one for every one of their Valica triggers. All right, sweet. So the deck's two and one. I'm one and two. Is there no steam vents in this deck? Weird. Wait, did they not? I, this whole league's been a hot mess. I just assumed they were taking my one drop. I name Lightning Bolt here. This card, this card's a lot worse in a deck without Kite Sail Freebooter to like give you information about what's in their hand. I like play a Liliana and Edict Dust. This card, this card's also really bad in a format where Renin Six is a card people play. It's also not good with Giver of Runes. The more the more I think about it, the more Phantasmal Image seems like really bad in this deck.
Yeah, gosh, Lava Dart too. Well, there's Lily out of the veil. Jacob, your mother is looking for you. Go upstairs. All right, so who are we losing? Um, I think I think it's just Champion of the Parish. No, Mon Mon why would we play Monastery Swift Spear in our deck with four instants and sorceries? That seems that seems exceptionally silly. All right, so I'm gonna Malcontents. I'm gonna deal two to them. I'm gonna have Giver of Rune smack Liliana. I'm gonna have Meddling Mage smack them. Giver of Runes is just a better mother of runes. Nope, uh, Giver of Runes notably can't, can't target itself, which is a pretty big downgrade. It's, it's not a slight downgrade, it's a very big downgrade. Mother, Mother of Runes is a card that's really frustrating to play against because it gives you a very, very tiny window inside of which you can inside of which you can interact with the opponent. Yeah, Giver Giver is also notably not a human, which is a big deal for the humans deck. What am I naming with this meddling mage? I feel like it's just another random removal spell, right? I don't name Assassin's Trophy. All right. Well, it didn't matter that we clicked past playing our one drop on one because Jund, Jund deck gonna Jund. All right, let's cut all these phantasmal images from our deck because they're real bad here. Thalia sounds great. Deputy attention is maybe okay as a tempo play. This specific configuration is also notably not playing for Reflector Mage, which I think is a bit of a miss. I need to look back and look at the straight blue white build that we had played. And see how see how it compares. Lavinia is does counter does counter cascade. That's cute. I don't know if it's good, but it's definitely cute. It's probably it's probably better than meddling mage, honestly. If they don't take the bolt here, I think I play Sunbaked Canyon on one, so that way I can like bolt a Dark Confidant if they play it on two. God, this this whole deck is just getting slaughtered by Renin Six, huh? Yeah, she's fine against Gak. She's also reasonable against Tron. Tarmogoyf, yep. So we're not bolting Tarmogoyf because uh, magic will make you very sad. 
Damage doesn't kill creatures, state-based actions do. So even though this is a 2-3 currently, if I were to Lightning Bolt this, when the game goes to check if this should die, it sees Lightning Bolt is in my graveyard. This will be a 3-4 with 3 damage marked on it. Can I just, like, can I just ever beat this card? I guess, I guess we bolt it, and we just get two for one by it. I guess, I guess that's how we do it. We just get two for one and hope to slog through. Yeah, like, you know, now Goyf is a 5-6, and I have a pain land. We've got two thumbs and concedes to a Bloodbraid Elf. This guy right here. Bumbling, bumbling, die. Yeah, I think I'm going to put uh, Lavinia in over the Meddling Mage, two of the Meddling Mages. Uh, kind of Tuberov. Like, nobody, nobody's playing Force of Negation against my deck full of humans in Cavernous Soul. So, like, that's not really a, that's not really a thing, a consideration. I think I'm keeping this. I I kind of, but again, like your point, your point, you're you're acting like you're trying to make a point without including any context, which is just like it's silly in general, and it's especially silly in magic because con context is just king. So like. Pointing, pointing out this thing like, can you describe to me a blue-white deck that would, one, want to play Lavinia and cares about Force of Negation? Also, yeah, that would, that would be, that would be my big question to you. So, like, pick, pick me out a thing that meets those conditions. They're gonna play Ren and Stimpy. My Thalia's Lieutenant's gonna die. I'm gonna be very sad. At least I have a Mantis Rider to finish him off. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of good things we could play over Phantasmal Image. Thalia, Thalia is definitely on the list. So the Mariner here means that if they try to cascade into a... No, they're still two turns off by cascading, right? This makes it so. Their three mana removal is a lot worse, though. It's there, it's there for Gok and Tron. Those are, those are the matchups for it. Mm. Maybe because they play Liliana, I'm supposed to supposed to play the Islet there over the cavern. I think I want to just Thalia here, right? Just like keep taxing them. Amulet. Uh, it only stops non-creature spells, right? So it doesn't stop Primeval Titan. I'm pretty pretty sure. Like it stops creature spells if they're free, but it only stops non-creature spells from being cast for uh, more than you have lands. All right. So even if they have anger at this point. Uh, Thalia's lieutenant survives that and then kills them. So I feel like we're pretty in a reasonable spot here. They need like, they can't even damnation us because there's still two lands off of that thanks to Thalia. Oh, it does stop packs. Okay, that's fair. 
It stops packs. So you would, you would, it would play. It's so weird to me that they put a non-creature clause on her first half, but then didn't put a non-creature clause in the second half. That's so weird, weird templating in my mind. Like why, why do you feel like this card should be a hate card for like? Because like it would be so much better against Tron if it like stopped Worm Coil and Ulamog. All right, so if I had remembered the entirety of the text on Unsettled Mariner, the deck would be three and one right now, but we're currently two and two. I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep hands like this. Like, this is basically a four lander. Aether Vial is effectively a resource. What is up with Magic Online? It keeps not losing my keyboard focus or something. Yeah, looks like looks like another fish matchup. It could be it could be spirits too theoretically, but it smells like smells like fish. We lost one of our losses earlier was to Merfolk. Their deck fit Merfolk is probably oh oh could be a human smear. Could be spirits. Actually, just a human smear. Okay. I wonder if us having access to... I bet us having access to Giver and Lightning Bolt's a big deal. Meddling Mage not particularly good here. Because we have Double Vile. Let's see if they're spooky and name Lightning Bolt. Mantis, Mantis Rider is a good name there on their part. Like keeps me off of, I'm going to get to put it in off of Aether Vial eventually, but naming that there keeps me from putting it in this turn. And now, now I've lightning bolted them and played a fetch land. So the jig is up and they know like we're not stock five color humans. And, uh, we've yet to draw a spell this game, which uh, kind of sucks considering we effectively kept a four lander with the double vial. Vial will provide a little bit of utility outside of that, but I think I, I want to leave the vial on one on one because my opponent's uh, deck has four reflector mages in it and giver of runes is going to prevent them from reflecting a non-giver creature. So I want to leave a vial on one so I can always put giver of runes back in after the aether after they reflector mage her. Hey, what's going on, Vicarian? Yeah, there's no there's no major events going on this weekend, so I'd like to try and make a point to stream a little bit when there's no events going on. We have we have a good viewer count today. I plan to go for a little while. We're just doing one modern lead to kick things off, then we're gonna do a bunch of standard. Now this one, I would not be surprised if uh if this name's Lightning Bolt. Since they've seen that. Furious Emu, thank you for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for putting mine this month with that. And I got in away with it too if it wasn't for those meddling kids. All right, so I'm going to say always no on this one. And then I am going to go ahead and push this one to three. And this is actually exactly why I want to push that one to three, because I can still cast a two drop here, but I can't cast a three drop after I cycle. Every day we cycle and cycle and cycle in. Beep, 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 beep. I think I'm just hanging tight for now. I feel like with Giver in my deck and in play especially. Uh, I'm a pretty reasonable favorite as this match goes long. So I think I just want to be concerned. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. We were supposed to be ahead because we had giver of runes and they didn't, chat. 
We, we are supposed to be ahead. I'm like, post board, my opponent probably has Plague Engineer and we don't. I mean, all, all of these... All of these tribal matchups just got so much worse in the face of Plague Engineer. Guy of Main Deck Deputy. And they're taking my vials. Yep. Well, the good news is if I hit my Reflector Mage. I can reflector this, which kills it. The Wurza deck is absurdly powerful. It is very insane. Hey, Tim Jackson. Thank you for the brand new Prime support. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting me on this month with that. All right, let's just get in there. Or no, now no longer favored in a long game because they took my Aether Vials and they have a giver of runes themselves. So let's get aggressive here. What is that? This is a good draw. Yeah, the problem with the words of deck is that making content for it is rough because it's not a deck. It's like Devoted Druid in that it's a deck that's very tedious to play on Magic Online. The way, the way its combo executes. Yep, I think that's probably the game. Plague Engineer is secretly good against Team Escape Ship because Snake gets Coddle and Steve. That's really funny. So I'm not recasting Giver of Runes this turn. Because Reflector Mage says I'm not allowed to do that. I'm not attacking because I don't have good attacks. If I attack with all of these, they block here, give this protection from white, take seven, and they have a big attack on the backswing and they lose nothing. So I'm just leave my stuff back on defense. Because they can only they can only attack with a single thing by giving it protection from white. Have another reflector mage probably did here. Yeah. Yeah, not not having four reflector mages in the 75 feels weird. One of the things we did um when we played straight blue white humans was I had not only four reflector mages, but also some number of deputies in my main deck, similar to what it looks like the opponent's doing here in their uh in their configuration. Deputy and Static Caster are great here. I think Time Raveler might actually be okay. Dahlia seems like a reasonable trim. My, what am I supposed to cut here? I think Unsettled Mariner's probably okay. It makes their mages and deputy activations cost a mana. Maybe Tefri's not good enough. They're probably going to leave some amount of Thalia's in, which makes Tefri worse. Hey, Jexers. Happy Saturday. Need two more, two more cuts here to fit in. I'm going to trim the Malcontents. They're okay when racing, but I'm like bringing in three drops, and I don't want to have too many threes glutted up in my hand.
Now, single giver is good, double giver is gross. Because while, while giver, unlike Mother of Runes, cannot protect herself, once you have two stepmoms in play, they can protect each other. Stepmom, stepmom, gonna give it to you. Gonna give it to you. Gonna give it to you. Might as well attack here. See if they play a one toughness two drop here. Bolts aren't as good in Humans Beer Game 2 because they're just trying to tax out the bolts for being playable in my experience. What do you mean? Can you give me can you give me an example, legit Reaper? Instead of being vague, be specific. Would Stoneforge Mystic actually be that good in this matchup? Because, like, Banner Skull Germ gets bounced by Reflector Mage. That's a pretty big tempo loss. I did, Dannon. I had I had multiple people try and get me to play that. I play I politely declined. We do we do enough losing with decks that are trying to be good, much less a deck that knows it's not. I mean, in my experience, getting my stuff pushed in by Hagok and other good modern decks by playing a deck that's, like, really bad is not enjoyable. Modern modern gets, like, more hostile towards Bruise with every set release. Modern, modern Horizons really did a number on the Tier 2 decks in this format. I'm sure, I'm sure if it, like, high rolls every game, it's fine. Sort of fire and ice. Maybe. It takes a lot to get going, though. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there's some amount of the time where you high roll and turn to someone that it looks fine. The majority of your games are not that, though. Opponent appears to have disconnected or walked away from their computer or something like that. Timothy, 5509, thank you for the eight months of Prime Support. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. How are you doing, everyone? Happy Saturday. I like to squeeze in some weekend streams when I can. Talia. Yep. Throw a little static in her direction. Just doing this now proactively so they can't like Violin Athalia's lieutenant in response to power her up. Your your three card combo that loses to a shock. That's the that's the real key. It's not even that like it's a three card combo and a deck that like can't even like play cards to assemble it it's like the the level of interaction you lose to too is also like not ideal lightning bolt yep So, I'm going to go Mariner, 
into Phantasmal Image, copy my Static Caster. My Moto locked up? Is Moto crashing or did my opponent concede? Oppon opponents conceded, all right, excellent. That's the, that's the million dollar question. Like, did Moto crash? Or is the game locking up because my opponent conceded? This is, uh, this is an excellent way to end the league. The old, the old double mulligan. Would love to draw a champion of the parish on one here so we can go champion into lieutenant. These are the questions that keep me up at night. Yep. Uh, we only played against humans this one match. These are these are best of three wild feathers. This is game three. What do we play this league? We played Merfolk, Gak, Scapeshift, Humans. What was the what was the fifth? I'm blanking on the fifth now. Some days I'm here for the decks, other days for the timeouts. Thanks for the five months, Rook. I appreciate it. Welcome back. Oh, Jund, right? We beat Jund. P poor Jund. So not memorable. You can't even remember you beat it. Back in my day, a 2 2 cost two, and I had to walk uphill both ways to cast a counterspell. To be, to be fair, Philly, your analogy is a little bit off because counter spells have gotten steadily worse while creatures have gotten steadily better. Wow, well, their hand seems pretty bad. This one gonna name Static Caster. Just cover my removal. Could name Reflector Mage here too. Static Caster, yep. Mod only chat. Yeah, modern modern tends to look mod only a lot of the time because um I give people mod swords when they've been subbed for 12 months, and most of the most of the people who can stomach modern have been here a while. I miss remand. Yeah, remember, remember when modern was a format where remand was playable? Anybody, anybody remember that? That was weird. Does Stor doesn't Storm still play it as a trick? Uh, I don't think so. All right, so this attack signifies they have an image or another lieutenant, but I think that's fine. I think I'm still trading this here. I can't just like take a hit for 12 or 11.
All right, so they're on empty. They have two four fours though. Really hoping to draw a deputy of detention here. So I think I want a Mariner first. So if I Mariner first, my Mariner ends up a 3-3. Three, three. So I have a 4-4, four, four, a 3-3, three, three, and a 1-1. One, one. Wonder, wonder if we'll see them just attack with an Exalted 5-5 five, five this turn. They are, they are on empty. We're like getting close to stabilizing this board. I do this and this I think I like this if they have another lieutenant I'm in a little bit of trouble but this lets me eat two of their things and they eat one of mine down to three and then once I play this Mantis Rider out, I'll have um, two three threes and a five five. I assume this name's Deputy of Detention, because otherwise that card just like hoses them off completely. I'm just dead to rights if I were top deck that. Uh, not that I recall, Pythreon. At least, like, think about the cards that they have that are bad for them here. They come to the conclusion of Deputy, I think. It's a tough name, though. If they don't think too hard about it, they might just want to name another common human card that we could have. Phantasmal Image, sure. Deputy? I think we're, I think we're actually a little bit ahead at the moment. Not, not a lot a bit ahead, but a little bit. I definitely have top decks that kill us here. They have Is It Static Caster, Phantasmal Image, and Lightning Bolt named currently. This is a Plague Engineer? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Did, did you know that this card is one-sided for whatever messed up reason? Did anybody, did you all at home know that? Do you know how incredibly messed up this card is? This card's the reason why the deck that I previously liked the most in Modern I will no longer play, which is Elves. Yep. It's a stream, that's a Streamlabs widget, Tuberov. So, if I hadn't conceded the scape shift match when I did, we certainly would have won that. So the deck would have gone three and two. We would have gone, we went two and three. Um, 
honestly, the red cards didn't really feel that good in this deck. I kind of felt like just being straight blue-white and having a little bit cleaner mana and, like, having access to more Reflector Mages and Deputy Detention in the main deck was kind of better. Phantasmal Image also feels like a pretty rotten card right now. Like, not only is it not good in this deck alongside Giver of Runes and Unsettled Mariner, but, like, in a world where, like, Renin 6 is seeing play in Jund decks and stuff like that, I feel like the stock in this card has gone, gone pretty far down, so... I wasn't super impressed with this list overall, even though it went 3-2, which is again why it's Lava Dart 2, yep. Which is why it's more important to think about more than just the record and think about the games that they played and how they played out, etc, etc. A Ginger Wookie, thank you for the seven months, I appreciate that, welcome back. We are going to go ahead and roll on into some standard here up next though. Yarok, Yarok me daddy. Yeah. Yeah, Plague Engineer. Plague Engineer is just a great example of as they as they print more card, fringe decks become more and more unplayable in formats like Modern. Takes takes decks like Elves and pushes them even further to the outside. 